Black holes, enigmatic cosmic entities characterized by their immense gravitational pull, have captivated the human imagination and puzzled scientists for decades. These celestial objects formed from the remnants of massive stars that have collapsed under their own gravity, possess such intense gravitational forces that nothing, not even light, can escape their grasp. Scientists have begun to explore the intriguing possibility of harnessing black holes for experimentation, leveraging their extreme conditions to study fundamental physics, test the limits of our current understanding, and gain insights into the nature of space, time, and gravity itself. So how newly discovered black holes would put existing physics theories to the test, and what are their details? You will get to know this and plenty more as we dive into the details of today's show. However, before getting started with the video officially, here's a quick reminder that you can subscribe for free and like the video so that we can boost the algorithm. Comments are most welcomed. Black holes. Don't let the name fool you. A black hole is anything but empty space. Rather, it is a great amount of matter packed into a very small area. Think of a star 10 times more massive than the sun squeezed into a sphere, approximately the diameter of New York City. The result is a gravitational field so strong that nothing, not even light, can escape. In recent years, NASA instruments have painted a new picture of these strange objects that are, to many, the most fascinating objects in space. Black holes hold a multitude of mysteries, such as their exact formation mechanisms and the nature of their singularities, and their potential role in the evolution of galaxies. While their existence was once purely theoretical, the detection of gravitational waves in recent years has provided compelling evidence of their presence in the universe. The idea of an object in space so massive and dense that light could not escape it has been around for centuries. Most famously, black holes were predicted by Einstein's theory of general relativity, which showed that when a massive star dies, it leaves behind a small, dense remnant core. If the core's mass is more than about three times the mass of the Sun, the equations showed the force of gravity overwhelms all other forces and produces a black hole. Scientists can't directly observe black holes with telescopes that detect X-rays, light, or other forms of electromagnetic radiation. We can, however, infer the presence of black holes and study them by detecting their effect on other matter nearby. If a black hole passes through a cloud of interstellar matter, for example, it will draw matter inward in a process known as accretion. A similar process can occur if a normal star passes close to a black hole. In this case, the black hole can tear the star apart as it pulls toward itself. As the attractive matter accelerates and heats up, it emits X-rays that radiate into space. Recent discoveries offer some tantalizing evidence that black holes dramatically influence the neighborhoods around them, emitting powerful gamma-ray bursts, devouring nearby stars, and spurring the growth of new stars in some areas while stalling it in others. One star's end is a black hole's beginning. Most black holes form from the remnants of a large star that dies in a supernova explosion. Smaller stars become dense neutron stars, which are not massive enough to trap light. If the star's total mass is large enough, about three times the mass of the Sun, it can be proven theoretically that no force can keep the star from collapsing under the influence of gravity. However, as the star collapses, a strange thing occurs. As the surface of the star nears an imaginary surface called the event horizon, time on the star slows relative to the time kept by observers far away. When the surface reaches the event horizon, time stands still, and the star can collapse no more. It is a frozen collapsing object. Even bigger black holes can result from stellar collisions. Soon after its launch in December 2004, NASA's Swift telescope observed the powerful fleeting flashes of light known as gamma-ray bursts. Chandra and NASA's Hubble Space Telescope later collected data from the event's afterglow, and together the observations led astronomers to conclude that powerful explosions can result when a black hole and a neutron star collide, producing another black hole. Babies and Giants Although the basic formation process is understood, one perennial mystery in the science of black holes is that they appear to exist on two radically different sized scales. On the one end, there are countless black holes that are the remnants of the massive stars. Peppered throughout the universe, these stellar mass black holes are generally 10 to 24 times as massive as the Sun. Astronomers spot them when another straw draws near enough for some of the matter surrounding it to be snared by the black hole's gravity, churning out X-rays in the process. Most stellar black holes, however, are very difficult to detect, judging from the number of stars large enough to produce such black holes. However, scientists estimate that there are many as 10 million to a billion such black holes in the Milky Way alone. On the other end of the size spectrum are the giants known as supermassive black holes. 
which are millions, if not billions, of times as massive as the Sun. Astronomers believe that supermassive black holes lie at the center of virtually all large galaxies, even our own Milky Way. Astronomers can detect them by watching for their effects on nearby stars and gas. Historically, astronomers have long believed that no mid-sized black holes exist. However, recent evidence from Chandra, XMM Newton, and Hubble strengthens the case that mid-sized black holes do exist. One possible mechanism for the formation of a supermassive black holes involves a chain reaction of collisions of stars and compact star clusters that results in the buildup of extremely massive stars, which then collapse to form intermediate mass black holes. The star clusters then sink to the center of the galaxy where the intermediate mass black holes merge to form a supermassive black hole. Quantum computing? What's inside? Holographic duality essentially asserts that the theories of gravity and particles are interchangeable, at least in terms of math. Because of this, what occurs mathematically in the theory of gravity also occurs mathematically in the theory of particles. Both of these ideas primarily describe separate dimensions, yet particle theory only has two dimensions, but gravity describes three. By exploring this theory, the researchers sought to get insight into what happens inside black holes. In the current study, University of Michigan research scientist Enrico Rinaldi concentrated on these two hypotheses. In Einstein's general relativity theory, there are no particles, there's just space-time. And in the standard model of particle physics, there's no gravity, there are just particles, he says. Connecting the two different theories is a long-standing issue in physics, something people have been trying to do since the last century. Rinaldi and the other participants in the project were able to investigate holographic duality by linking these two ideas and employing quantum matrix models. The goal was to bring together our understanding of particle theory and gravitation theory. They began by using straightforward matrix models composed of blocks of numbers. It's a common framework seen in quantum computers where one-dimensional strings are utilized to represent particle theory. They frequently assist researchers in locating the ground state, which, according to Rinaldi, is crucial since it enables the creation of new objects. 100 New Candidates 100 recently discovered supermassive black holes are being used as a laboratory by astronomers for rigorous physics tests. Due to the fact that these black holes are immediately ejecting explosive jets of matter and radiation towards Earth, they are known as blazers. Black holes' harsh settings are ideal for pushing the boundaries of physics, according to one of the study's authors. According to Abe Falcon, head of Penn State's High Energy Astrophysics Group, they give us opportunities to study theories of relativity, to better understand how particles behave at high energies, to study potential sources of cosmic rays that arrive here on Earth, and to study the evolution and formation of supermassive black holes and their jets. When part of the material surrounding a supermassive black hole routes to the black hole's poles at speeds close to the speed of light rather than falling to its surface, lasers are created. Enlightening this process could reveal how these cosmic titans grow to masses equivalent to millions or even billions of times that of the Sun. Jet activity is closely related to how supermassive black holes acquire mass. Because the jet of a blazar is pointed directly at us, we can see them from much farther away than other black hole systems, similar to how a flashlight appears brightest when you're looking directly at it, research lead Arthur and Penn State astronomer and astrophysics graduate student Stephen Kirby said in the same statement, Blazers are exciting to study because their properties allow us to answer questions about supermassive black holes throughout the universe. The researchers used telescopes to look for unclassified high-energy cosmic radiation when they discovered the new blazers. They recently discovered blazers pale in comparison to typical examples of these potent cosmic phenomena which frequently glow brighter than the sum of the luminosities of all the stars in the galaxy in which they reside. The team was able to test the blazer sequence, a contentious idea about blazer emissions thanks to the dimmer blazers. From low energy light like radio waves to extremely intense gamma rays, blazers release lights across the entire electromagnetic spectrum. However, the gamma ray and a number of lower energy wavelengths are likely to be the two wavelengths where the blazer's light spectrum tends to peak. These peaks' precise wavelength varies from blazer to blazer and is subject to alter over time. The lower energy peak for strong blazers is expected to be more towards the red or lower energy end of the electromagnetic spectrum than the same peak for dimmer blazers. According to the blazer sequence theory, however, it has been challenging to find observations that support the idea. With our currently operating telescopes, it's actually very difficult to detect and classify the lower energy peaked red blazers at that are also dim whereas it is much easier to find these blazers when their peaks are at higher energies or when they are bright, 
Falcone said. The newer research, by contrast, aims to start exploring the blaster sequence by delving deeper into lower luminosities of both the low-energy and high-energy peaked blasters, he added. A list of gamma ray sources discovered by the Fermi Large Area Telescope was examined by the researchers, and high-energy emissions that hadn't yet been connected to a low-energy peak from the same source were discovered. The astronomers discovered a counterpart emission in X-rays, ultraviolet light, or visible light detected by the Neil Gehrs Swift Observatory for each blaster spotted in gamma rays. The researchers were able to characterize the light from 106 new faint blasters thanks to the archived Swift data. The Swift telescope observations allowed us to pinpoint the positions of these blasters with much more precision than with the Fermi data alone, Kirby explained. Pulling together all this emission data, combined with the two new technical approaches, helped us identify where in the electromagnetic spectrum the low-energy peak occurs for each of the blasters. Physical modeling and machine learning, both types of artificial intelligence, helped with the search by establishing that the sample of dim blasters typically had a peak in the bluer, higher-energy light. In the future, the researchers will try to use this data set to forecast the properties of blasters that are yet too faint for scientists to directly observe. There are still a thousand Fermi unassociated sources for which we have found no X-ray counterpart, and it's a fairly safe assumption that many of those sources are also blasters that are just too dim in the X-rays for us to detect, Kirby said. This future study could allow us to team to further test the blaster sequence. Kirby said the new work could also show the strength of a blaster's jet's magnetic field and how fast the charged particles within it are moving. It's important to always work to expand our data sets to reach dimmer and dimmer sources because it makes our theories more complete and less prone to failures from unexpected biases," the graduate student said. I'm excited for the new telescopes to probe even dimmer blasters in the future. The team's research has been accepted for publication in the Astrophysical Journal and was published on the preprint server ARXIV on May 3rd. So how this new study and research into this field would help us to understand the mystery of black holes? Who could speculate it better than you? So do let us know your educated guests in the comment section below. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the thumbs up. It will help us to understand our audience and allows YouTube to suggest similar videos to you. Thanks for watching, and we hope to see you at the next one.